Alright, let's make the cow you just saw pop as much as possible in DaVinci Resolve with color grading. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is go to my node trees and apply my S-Log3 node tree. If you are interested in this node tree, I'm going to leave a link for it down below. And the first thing that I have in here is an input device transform and also an output device transform, which takes me from S-Log3 as Gamma 3 Cine to DaVinci Watt Gamma Intermediate because that's the widest color space available within DaVinci Resolve. And then for the output device transform, it takes me from DaVinci Watt Gamma Intermediate to Rec. 9 Type A because I'm using a Mac display. If you are using a Windows display, then I would recommend setting the Gamma to 2.4. Basically, all this does is convert my S-Log3 footage to Rec. 709, but before I do that, I also convert it to DaVinci Watt Gamut Intermediate because that delivers better results when adjusting contrast, exposure and colors in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so the first node in here is noise reduction, which is turned off by default because not every single clip that I import to DaVinci Resolve requires noise reduction. And if I'm going to set this to full screen one second and just analyze it, yeah, I don't think this clip requires any noise reduction. It looks very clean to me. So I'm going to just leave it off and then move on to the next step, which is adjusting the white balance with this node. And the way I adjust white balance in DaVinci Resolve with all of my cameras pretty much is I set the node gamma to linear and then I play around with the gain wheel in here because this, in my opinion, delivers the best results when it comes to getting the correct white balance in DaVinci Resolve. So I feel like this shot is a bit too magenta, probably from my ND filter and also a bit too warm, right? So I'm gonna go to the gain wheel again and I'm going to slightly reduce the red just to remove slightly the magenta. Maybe something like this. And also I'm going to slightly increase the blue to about here, I would say. Something like this. And I'm eyeballing everything. If it looks right to me on the screen, then it's correct in most cases at least. And if I'm gonna zoom in to the face of the cow in here, and I'm gonna do a before and after, I hope you can see the results, especially in here. Like take a look at this area in here, which is supposed to be kind of white almost. Before it was too warm and a bit red, and now it looks much more color neutral in my opinion, which is exactly what you want before actually applying a look, because then you will get the absolute best results possible you know, when adjusting, pushing the colors around to get a stylish look. All right, next for the exposure, I'm not going to touch this node because the exposure in here is pretty much on point in my opinion. However, I am going to adjust the contrast and also the saturation. Let's start with the saturation. First of all, I've set this node color space to HSV. I feel like this is the best way to add saturation and resolve if you want it to be very granular, very you know, soft in a way, more cinematic, if you will. And the way you add saturation with this is by using the gamma wheel and also the gain wheel. Usually I add more to the gain wheel like this, and then I counterbalance it with the gain wheel by pushing it down. Something like this. Let me put it around here so you can see it better. And now let's do a before and after. This is the before and after, before, and after. Looks beautiful in my opinion. All right, now let's add some contrast. I'm gonna use the classic way to add contrast with the color wheels primaries. Let's push down the lift quite heavily because recently I've been going heavily towards a very contrasty look. I kinda like it now. So I'm gonna go down with the lift, slightly also reduce the gamma, and then I'm going to increase the gain to bring in as much contrast as possible because I've been watching a lot of movies, especially on this MacBook display, and everything looks very pushed and very contrasty, and I kind of want to learn how to replicate that with my footage. So I'm just gonna play around with this until it somewhat looks okay, which is somewhere around here. If I'm gonna do a before and after, there is a, like a significant difference. Like, look how much the subject pops from the background right like before it was very dull and boring and now boom it looks much better maybe i slightly exaggerated with the contrast let me slightly bring it back here all 
I feel like something like this looks okay and obviously all the time I can come back to this node and readjust this if necessary which is why I'm using a node tree a structured node tree to have everything in place so I know where I need to go if I need to target contrast, saturation, exposure, white balance, and so on. All right, next in here, I have a skin node to adjust skin tones, but because there is no skin in here, I'm not going to touch this node. But here I also have a hue node where I adjust the specific hues in the frame, basically. And one thing that I don't like in this shot is definitely the blues in here. It's a bit distracting in my opinion. So I'm gonna go to the hue, open up the color slicer because it's, the easiest one to use in my personal opinion to target specific hues in the frame and I'm going to make sure this selects the blue in the frame and it does as you can see and I'm going to desaturate this just to remove this nasty blue from the background I'm also going to add some density to it and maybe push it towards a teal color slightly something like that and if I'm going to do a before and after there is a significant difference in my opinion. Maybe also I'm going to add density to the yellow colors in here, to the leaves and foreground elements, just to make the subject pop even more and slightly desaturate this just a little bit. Maybe also the skin, which is the color of the cow. I'm going to add some density to it just a little bit. And again, slightly desaturate this. And this is the before and after before and after, as you can see, now it looks a bit more balanced, which is exactly what I want before actually applying a look to my footage. Uh, I'm drinking soda water. I guess I'm getting old. All right, anyhow, another thing that I'm going to do with this shot is maybe apply a mask to the cow. Although I feel like because of this lens that I used here, the Zeiss 55mm 1.8, which always, you know, makes the subject pop from the background, like... Look how much the cow is separated from the background and I haven't really applied any masks to the cow or anything like that. It looks phenomenal in my opinion. However, I'm gonna take it to the next step to make it look even better. So here I have three power windows with my Note 3 and in here also I have an out node for each power window, which means that it's going to select everything outside of the mask. Let me show you. So I'm going to go to power window one. And I think the window that I'm going to add here to the cow is a magic mask because it's super easy to use and it works in most cases amazing in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so I'm going to turn it on here, switch it to better mode to get better tracking results and so on. Click on the cow and then I'm going to start tracking and let Resolve do its magic. All right, let me make sure that everything is good with the tracking and it looks very well very good in my opinion so i'm gonna leave it at this but i am going to increase the blow radius slightly also denoise this a little bit increase the post filter just to make the edges of the selection a bit softer and also maybe i'm going to clean the blacks in here right and i'm going to turn this off to see my clip properly i'm gonna go to the hdr wheels slightly increase the exposure on the cow just a little bit you don't want to go something like this because it looks too fake in my opinion so i'm gonna go like 0.1 i feel like it's more than good enough because like i said this lens makes the subject pop more than enough in my opinion already so i don't want to make it look too fake and then i'm gonna go to the one out which is going to select everything outside of my selection and in here i'm going to decrease the exposure so then the cow pops even more from the background and again i'm not gonna go too much because i don't want to make it look too fake so something like this looks good to me before and after. As you can see, it makes a significant difference. Like I'm going to zoom in in here. Look at this beautiful face. This is the before and after, before and after. Let's see it full screen one second. Yeah, it looks very natural to me in my opinion. Maybe actually I'm going to slightly decrease the exposure even more with the cow because it, it looks a bit fake. Something like this. I feel like it's more than good enough and it's barely noticeable. However, again, if I'm going to do a before and after, 
it does make a significant difference. All right, I don't think I'm gonna add any other masks in here. This is more than good enough. I'm gonna move on to this node in here, which is a trim node. And in here, I usually elevate the shadows and compress the highlights for a more cinematic look. And the way I do that is I switch this to Y, which is only going to select, I mean, affect the luminance of the shot. Then I enable here the editable splines and I basically bring down the white point to compress the whites, the highlights, and then I bring back some contrast, and then I elevate basically the blacks up to make the blacks a bit more faded. And at the same time, I also bring back some contrast. And I'm gonna play with this until it looks somewhat okay. Let's push it to the extreme here. I'm going for a very contrasty and moody look here. Okay, this looks fantastic already. Now let's move on to the color grading step. So first of all, I'm gonna enable here Dehancer, which is my plugin of choice for so long to color grade my videos, my clips, my footage as quickly as possible and still get fantastic results. So I'm gonna go in here and then I'm going to select maybe a different film profile. Let's see this. Wow, this one looks phenomenal. I'm gonna put it around here. I want to be like this, maybe something like minus 0.5, something like that. I'm going to increase the black point even more for a more contrasty look. And then my print profile is set to Kodak 2383. And I'm going to play around with this target white to push the footage towards a specific color, which is either blue or yellow. I'm going to put it to minus 0.75 and the rest I'm not really going to touch anything in here but my output in here is set to 30 only because if I'm going to set it to 100 this is way too pushed for me so I usually leave the answer at 30 and I think it looks great let me see a before and after before and after I'm also going to use this node in here which is a node for film no creator let me enable this and in here I do a couple of things first of all Maybe I'm going to add a film look. By default, it's set to 0.5 in here with my notary. So, you know what? I'm going to go to the extreme. Let's go like 0.85, right? I'm going to also increase the bleach bypass, which is going to make your footage more contrasty and at the same time more black and white, which is something that I'm going for. I'm going to set it to about 0.5. And I know it looks bad, but wait for it. And then with the split tone, this is where I usually create like a split tone effect in the footage. Let me put it to 100% with the amount. Choose a hue that I like, which is like green, yellow, something like that. Let's do like 48 in here. And then I'm going to set the amount back to like 0.3 to make it less intense. And with the pivot, I'm going to play around with this. Set it to about 0.285 just to make it a bit more round. And now I'm gonna go to my global blend, which is set to 100% to one. And I'm gonna play around with this until I'm happy because this is obviously way too much. So I'm gonna go and set it about here. That's a 0.55. Now this is the before and after, before and after. Maybe actually I'm gonna come back to the film look creator and I'm gonna go to my film look blend and I'm going to slightly decrease it. Which doesn't really do too much, honestly. I feel like it's the the bleach bypass let me decrease it a little bit yeah maybe like 0 0.4 this looks fantastic okay now if i'm going to select these two nodes and i'm gonna do a before and after like look at the difference a significant difference in my opinion it looks you know so much moodier and like it has a certain character to it now as before it was like boring and plain, but now like the cow pops from the background so much more. But we can do a couple of other things. First of all, I have here a look node that is usually off. And I keep this node in here just in case if I need to do some final tweaks or something like that. But in this case, I don't really need to use it. So I'm going to move in here, which is trim to. And this is where I usually rebalance the grade if necessary and maybe I need to clean the blacks. No, actually the blacks look very neutral to me, so I'm going to just leave it as is. But I am going to enable the sharpness just to make the cow a bit sharper because this lens is a bit soft, especially when shooting wide open. And as you can see, it just makes the, the cow a bit sharper, right? And this node here is set to 
sharpen to blower sharpen and I've set the radius to 0.48 the coring softness to 50 and the level to 25 and it's basically like masking towards what areas the sharpness is being applied because I don't want to apply sharpness to the whole frame I just want to mainly affect the mid-tones if you will. Alright and finally just because I feel like it's going to match the look of this lens and also the vibe the atmosphere of the shot. Let's enable this grain in here, which is again the Hanser. I'm using the grain from the Hanser, but in here I have only enabled film grain and also bloom. That's it. So I am going to adjust this. First of all, let me go to the film grain in here and I feel like I'm going to increase the amount. Let's go to like 50 and then I'm also going to go to the bloom and slightly play around with this until I'm happy as you can see like if you look at the cow in here at the you know bright parts of the character of the subject you see how how much it makes the highlights a bit like softer which is kind of what I want with this shot let's set it around here let's zoom it to fit now oh, the Vinci Resolve is lagging because all of these effects but I think it looks fantastic although I can slightly increase the overall output of this. If I go to 100%, obviously this is way too much, way too fake, but before it was a little too little. So I'm gonna go, let's go like 35, preview this one second. Yeah, it's a bit too much, let's go like 30. Yeah, something like this looks fantastic. Maybe actually I can come back to my trim node in here and slightly increase the shadows just a little bit and slightly increase the highlights and also I'm gonna go to the power window one out and slightly decrease the exposure except the you know from the subject and now let's review this wow looks fantastic in my opinion <laughs> Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new today. And honestly, this is my workflow for color grading pretty much all of my cameras. The only thing that is different is the input device transform. And also sometimes I will use a different film stock in the Hanser or maybe apply less of the bleach bypass or use a different split tone effect or something like that but for the most part everything is pretty much the same i'm using the same node trim with all of my cameras because it makes everything much easier if you are interested to check it out i'm going to leave a link for it down below and yeah thanks for watching and i guess i'll see you again soon bye bye